Now, the next part of this thing is the mouse input itself. Because think about it, up until now, we've been treating the mouse cursor, it gives us absolute coordinates in the space of the window, in the client region. So we can, every, uh, every time it moves, we get a message or an event, and that event tells us uh, where it moved to. Where? Not by how much. But when you're moving around in a first-person shooter game, you don't care where the cursor is on the screen, you care how much it moved. What is the delta? Because you need to use that delta and convert that into a rotation of your camera or your character or both, really. Uh, now, the best way to get that information, I mean, you could get it by uh, tracking where the mouse was in the last frame and then um, you get the mouse uh, where it is after it moved, and then you calculate the delta from that. But when we're confining our mouse here, if the, if the user keeps moving to the right, it's going to get stuck on the right-hand side. There's no going to be no delta. Even though they're moving their mouse, the cursor isn't moving, there's no delta. And some games get around that by basically every frame resetting the cursor to the center of the, uh, the, center of the client region and then tracking it by getting delta. You can do it that way. It's just dirty. It's a, it's a nasty way of doing it. It's not the sexy way to do it. It's not the professional way to do it. So let me, guys, let me show you guys the professional way. There's another way to get input from your devices in Windows, with Windows messages. That's called raw input. So when you do raw input in Windows, you're gonna be communicating with the devices more or less directly. And that is going to make things a little more complicated. But it allows you to, like I said, get the relative uh, input completely independent of the cursor. The cursor doesn't matter, it just matters what the user actually, the actual deltas of the user moving the mouse is, you get that directly. You're also going to get your input, it's going to be a little bit higher resolution, which might matter for some kinds of games, usually it's not a big deal. Uh, but if, if that's a thing that, that you're interested in, you can also reap that benefit. And something cool that is not used very often, but is interesting, if you connect multiple mice to a Windows system, they'll all control the pointer together. Any, you move any of them and they'll move the cursor. Uh, you can't distinguish which one caused that motion, but with raw input, you can single out specific devices and get separate input from two different mouses. So you could have a game, two-player game, where two users can plug in separate my mice and both control with their own separate mice, two different characters. Now to get into raw input, a good starting place is the, uh, the Microsoft documentation here. They've got a fairly good okay guide here on how to get started with this stuff. Uh, you'll have to work out the kinks by googling and stack overflow and stuff. Another recommendation I just want to give you guys here is a uh, longtime friend of the channel, Jay Press, also known as Pindrought. He has a whole series on DirectX 11 here and he has a video on raw mouse input so you might want to check out his stuff as well. Alright, so raw mouse input. How do we do? There is a few ways you can do it. I'm going to show you guys the most straightforward way, and that's what we're going to use. Uh, now, there is a message, a Windows message, called WM input. And when you get that message, it will basically give you a handle to some raw input data. And then you call get raw input data with that handle, and then you can process that information. So you basically hook it into a Windows message, and then you use that message to notify you of when you have to grab raw input. Before we get into this, there's something that you have to know, and that is you will not get Windows WM input messages until you have registered devices for raw input. Windows by default does not send, does not spam you with messages about raw input because most apps don't really care about that. So you have to tell Windows that you are interested in raw input from a specific device and only then will you start to receive these messages and only then will you be able to actually get that raw data. Now the function to do that is called register raw input devices. Uh, you have to pass it a structure here raw input device, and that will tell Windows which device you are looking to get raw input from. Now this is a little annoying, there is a usage page and a usage, and these are just two bytes, and these the, con the combination of these two bytes tells Windows what device you are targeting. And it can be tricky to find out exactly which numbers you need to use for which devices, but for the raw mouse, you just want an, a 1 here and a 2 here. That's it, just to give them a 1 and a 2, and you're all good to go. You don't want any flags, um, and you don't have to specify uh, a window, like what window you want to get uh, these events for. You can just give it a null pointer and it'll work. So, we pass it that. 
So we pass it a pointer to our structure. We tell it that we're only giving it one structure. You could also pass in an array of structures and you got to tell it the size of the structure. And if it returns false, then you've got a problem. Probably just want to throw an exception there because not being able to get raw mouse input is kind of a big deal. But you could also do some kind of fallback or whatever. It's all up to you. So registering is not that big of a deal as long as you know the usage. Now, to actually handle the WM input. So what you're going to do here is you're going to call get input data. Uh, the L param is a handle to that raw input. So you call get input data with the, uh, the L param. You say, give me the data, but you don't give it a pointer to fill. If you call it with a null pointer here in this parameter, and uh, you give it a, ref no, a, a pointer to size, it will fill this unsigned int with the number of bytes that are, that are required for the raw input data. So what I've done, I've, ha I've got a raw buffer here. It's basically just a vector. And uh, I resize it to the size that is requested here. And then I call get raw input data again, this time with a pointer to my buffer. And this function will now fill this buffer with the raw input data. And that's just, you know, a raw buffer of bytes. Now notice here, the return values of get raw input data. If there is an error, uh, when you call it with no pointer, it's going to return negative one. And if we get an error, we're not going to throw an exception or anything. We're just going to bail out. We're just going to say, okay, something went wrong. That's fine. We'll just ignore this, uh, this single packet of input. Uh, you might want to, if you have a log, you might want to log that. Uh, we're just going to bail out here and here if the if it succeeds then it's going to return the number of bytes that were actually read and that should be equal to the number of bytes that we had got in the first call here so if the number of bytes is somehow different for some reason that's also probably a sign that something's gone wrong probably don't want to continue so we'll just bail out but anyways you get to this point here now your raw buffer is filled with bytes that correspond to the raw input data just raw input structure here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reinterpret that. Uh, I'm gonna dereference it, and then I'm gonna reinterpret it as a reference, const reference to that data. And I'll just store that here in a little alias called ri. And now that I've got my little alias here, we can actually check it out and get the information. So this raw input structure, it's gonna have two parts to it that we're interested in. It's gonna have a header, and it's gonna have data. The header, lets us know the type and we're only interested in uh, mouse type messages so if we get any other kind of message for whatever reason we're going to ignore that stuff uh, but if it is a mouse type message we're going to check the data mouse x value and the y value uh, if both of them are zero it might be a click but we're not handling clicks with raw input we're just going to handle clicks with our normal mouse input system because it doesn't there's no real reason to handle it with raw input. Um, so I'm not going to add that extra code, extra work for no benefit. Uh, so we're only handling messages if they have an X delta or a Y delta. That indicates there was a movement. Then we are going to call on our uh, on our little mouse class. New function I've added called on raw delta. And we're going to pass it the delta X and the delta Y. And that is going to register that as an event in our mouse class. So if we look at mouse, and uh, mouse here, we, I've added a new structure, raw delta, and it's just x and y int, very simple. I've added a function read raw delta, which returns an optional raw delta, and on raw delta, which is used to push raw deltas into our good boy here, which is another Q. So we now we've got a Q of raw deltas in addition to our Q of events. So I'm, I've decided to separate it from normal events and raw deltas. They're two different things. If you wanted, you could try to find a way to unify them, maybe with polymorphism, but I, f I think that would just complicate things for not too much benefit. And then on re -raw, read raw delta, I mean, if the, if the queue is empty, we just return a null optional, which means there's no data. Otherwise, we get the, uh, the raw delta from the front and we pop it. It's very simple. It's the same stuff that we've been doing with this trim buffer as well. It's the same stuff that we've been doing with uh, normal events. Now, I'm going to want a way of actually, you know, getting feedback and seeing that my raw delta processing is working. 
So I've added a raw input window and I've added X and Y value that's going to track X and Y over frames, it's going to accumulate the raw delta that we receive. And show raw input window is very simple. It's got a while loop that processes raw delta and, you know, accumulates them in X and Y. And then it, you know, does im GUI, shows us a little bit of text with the, uh, the raw delta tally, the accumulated deltas. And if you run that, you can see the raw input window right there. And as I move my mouse around, I'm now moving it to the right, more to the right. It is accumulating delta values. Very nice. And it doesn't matter that my, my cursor is definitely being confined to the edge of the window, but I'm still getting those deltas because it is independent of the cursor. It's the actual raw movement of the mouse itself. Now, these last two commits here are very simple. On this one, I allow the user to toggle the state of the cursor with a uh, insert key here. So instead of doing that stuff by default when the program starts, I allow the user to control that, very important. And then in here, we're gonna do the same, but for the raw input, we wanna be able to toggle, enable and disable the capturing of raw input. Uh, now in app.cpp, I've removed this cursor enabled flag here, because we're gonna be managing it with a variable that's actually inside of the mouse. You'll see what I mean in a second. So in mouse.h, we add functions to enable, disable raw, and to get the state of the, uh, the raw input. And that works very simply here in mouse.h. Now in window.h, we have another function, cursor enabled. So we can enable, disable the cursor, but we can also get the state of the cursor, whether it's enabled or not. And that works the same here. Now in the raw mouse messages, if raw is not enabled, we'll just break out immediately. And then in app.h, we don't need this um, flag anymore because we're now using the, uh, the cursor enabled data directly to determine that. So if we press insert and uh, the cursor is enabled, we want to disable it. Otherwise you want to enable it. And there you go. We got the, the window. It's in the normal, normal state. Clicking on it, nothing's nothing going weird. I can interact with the MGUI. I press the insert key. Now the cursor is disabled and raw input is enabled. And you can see I'm getting my raw input now. I press insert again and we're back to normal. We can operate as usual. Beautiful. But that's going to about do it for this video. Stay tuned. For the next one, we are going to be wrapping up this short little mini detour. We're going to use our, our cursor technology and our raw input technology. We're going to put that together and we are going to actually now build a camera component that allows us to free look around the scene like a first person shooter. And as a bonus, we're also going to fix a little bug that I introduced uh, when I built the node tree viewer thingy. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more Hardware 3D.